Hey guys, so today what we're going to be doing is setting up our platformer. So we're actually going to be making a small game um, and the first set um, session that we're having today is how to bring in a few things to make it feel like you are actually having your own game. Um, and I think one of the most important parts of these is maybe setting up your filing system in terms of like an administrative way, um, but then also um, making it look <coughs> Sorry, a bit more like your game um, instead of having the normal grey assets that we have. So under content, we're actually going to start a new folder here. We're going to go underscore content for that. Um, and then within that, we're going to end up having lots of our files that we're going to be using later on. So if I make a file called maps, we're going to make another folder called widgets. We're going to have another folder called sprites. This is the one we're primarily going to use today. Um, <clears throat> so I might leave it as that just for today. Um, actually, one more, we'll add blueprints. Cool, so we've got our different, um, different ones there. The one we're going to be using predominantly today is sprites, so we might actually have my underscore player is added into that. Um, we we'll have another one as well. Uh, what we might actually call that is terrain. So we just have those two for now, um, and other ones like oh, actually we'll have a new folder for background as well. I was going to leave background just in the root folder for that, but I thought well we'll keep it nice and clean, um, so it looks nice. So we'll go my player, and then what I can do for that from my other screen is actually drag in um, a player that I've created uh, previously. So using the normal pixel art tutorials, you'll be able to do the same thing as I've done here. But I've got two animations that I want to bring in, so I'm going to bring both of them at the same time, which is fine. Um, both of them are PNGs and bring those in. So one thing we can look at is we've got our um, side scroller character here that we have. If I open him up, and you can see the different code that we've got working here. So we've got handle animation, and this is part of what I want to show you. We've got idle animation and running animation, and we've also got our viewport, and when I click on that, we've got our animation source there as well. So one of the big things that you can make a template like this feel a lot more like yours is actually changing this over so that you have a character of your own. Um, so first things first, what I'm gonna do is actually get these, um, PNGs that I've imported in and apply a 2D paper texture. You see there it gets rid of the background and actually identifies these different ones there. Um, what I'm going to do now is right click on idle animation and I'm going to extract the sprites from that. You can see there I've got my yellow squares around them so I know that that's done that correctly. All right, while I've still got those highlighted and you're going to have them highlighted after you've extracted those sprites, it's really easy to then create the flipbook rather than try to. Um, select them afterwards, it can be a little bit more confusing. You can see there that he's moving up and down really fast. Um, what I normally like to do is I'm going to add three units to each of these movements and that'll make it look like he's a lot more relaxed when he's standing there doing his idle animation. Um, I might even add one more because you know we don't stand there like hyperventilating, do we? We kind of stand there relaxed. So we've got that there now, ensuring I press save so I can keep that up to date. Um, and I have that idle animation there. As you might have guessed, we're now gonna move on to the running animation and we're gonna extract those sprites. You can see again, checking for those yellow squares around them so I know it's done it appropriately. Then right clicking and creating a flip book. And we're gonna call that running. Okay, a little bit different though. This is a running animation, so he is going to move a little bit faster. So I might actually leave that how it is, and I'm happy with that. Um, so I've got idle, where he's chilling, running, where he's moving really fast. So now if I go back and I want to edit my character, and I'll open this up. So I will actually change it here first. So clicking on my character here, I'm going to change this to my idle animation, and you'll notice that it's far too small. Um, but it's changed instantly, so I'm going to go over here to the Select and Scale tool. I should be able to grab all of these at the same time, like that, and scale him all the way up. Trying to make sure I'm conscious of how he's fitting in that capsule. Unfortunately, one of the things you can't change is actually this capsule. You can't make that bigger or smaller because it's inherent um, property. So if you did want to start from zero, that's something you would have to change. 
Okay, I'm going to compile and save that just so I've got my changes that I wanted there as well. Um, what, now, another thing that we need to change, and it should stay the same size. If I go event, I'm going to quickly go to these different ones here. So this is updating your animation, setting a flipbook, and you can see here that it's setting it um, depending on what's happening here to our values. So if I go not moving, we're going to have idle and we're going to set our running animation as well and compile and save and I quickly go back double check I've still got the guy in there compile save sometimes it gets a little bit twitchy and I'm trying to switch back on you so that's why I double checked um, so now if I press play I've got my character he's standing there idle and he also runs you can see as well because I haven't made a separate jumping animation just yet he sticks with the running one okay so now we've done that, so you've learnt how to create a project, and you see here the confines of this project as well, as well as the background. We're now going to quickly change a couple things. So one thing we're going to change is this block here. You can see here in the world outlier, there's lots of ledges put into it, um, which is good. Uh, but I want to alter one of these and I might even create another subfolder in here called floor because I'm going to have one big floor stretching across so we don't have something that it's good that they've done the filing system but it does kind of chock up the world outlier and the things you can see because you can see there's so many of them um, so what I'm going to quickly do is delete some of these I'm going to open this up and so now we've done that I can actually get out of this and go to my sprites folder I'm going to go to terrain and I'm going to drag in a floor and platforms um, sprite sheet that I made previously. You can see there that I haven't applied the 2D paper texture, so I'm going to do that now. And you can see how it separates them up. I'm going to right click on that again and I'm going to extract my sprites. And you see there, yellow marks. I got floor and platforms, sprite zero, one, two, and three. So I do have options here, and I'm going to change my uh, sprite two is going to be my floor. So I can go here and I can go to, uh, was it sprite or oh, floor? There we go. I want sprite two. And you see there it's changed it to being very small. We better make that bigger. And we've made that bigger. Let's move it into the middle a little bit. So that way we can scale it up and it should cover the entire floor. Uh, pretty simple, pretty nasty solution. What I should do is actually make one that's a lot bigger, made out of a lot more pixels, and that way I wouldn't be stretching them. Um, but for this demonstration, it is fine. The beauty of doing it this way as well, you see here for the Y axis, it's still on zero. So my player will still interact with that floor. It has the same um, constraint as the other platform that we had as well in terms of the collisions and things like that. Um, so that should be fine there. Um, what we might do as well is swap some of these other platforms around, but first what I'm going to do is swap the background around. So if I click on this background, um, and it's you can see over here in the Y value of the background is negative 441. Alright, it's not too important, you do want it a little bit further back. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to sprites, background, I'm going to drag in my background that I stole from the internet from my other page, right click on that, um, and I might extract the sprite. Cool. So now we've extracted that. Um, so I could actually just change this sprite to and change like that. You can kind of see how it's not perfect. So we could do, which is super easy. Normally what I do is actually delete it and I'll put my other one in. But today we will go the easy option like that. Let's double check. All right, cool. So that looks pretty well lined up. You can see that I've got the bottom lined up with the floor, so you'll see you won't see that. And I'll obviously try to make it so my platforms don't take me above the roof of the platform. So this will be a vertical um, platformer um, going up to a point up there. So if I press play, we can double check how that looks. Cool. And you can kind of you can still tell even though it's quite large, it is still got that forest 
um, jungle kind of um, texture to it as well. One thing I'm not too happy with though is actually still the floor. So I might try extending that down a little bit and that'll look a bit better. All right, I'm a bit happier with that and how that looks. What are they on there on zero? They're on zero. Cool. All right. So now I've done those different parts there. We've got a background. We've got those. Um, what I'm going to be doing in my next video is actually showing you how to set up some of these platforms and actually coding them to move up and down because we know a platform is not really that effective if we don't have platforms moving to offer challenges for us to get around. So hopefully you've learned a lot and I will see you for the next video.